I'm Lee Moore. I'm Rob Moore. And this is the Chinese Literature Podcast Supplement. Number two, people demanded a follow-up. The first one was so popular, we had people calling us out in the streets. T-shirts were, were popping up on people. They weren't just I'm popping up random randomly. T-shirts. Yeah, like just out of a sewer grate or anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know what Rob's talking about. No, no one ever um, does. <laughs> but but we are going to try and continue doing the supplemental yes. series because we have books that we like that, yeah. And we, the value that, you know, the, the whole reason we started doing this is because we have had quite a few people asking us, hey, I want to know more about, give us a topic, you know, yeah. pick a topic. Uh, what do I read? Well, this is the answer to those questions. And uh, we, should, we should point out the other reason that we are doing this is because we are – posting on our website links to these these books on Amazon and we may uh, get get remuneration so much money from them. I have to use the word may because Amazon requires that yeah. that verb. Yeah, exactly. There. I mean um, maybe not even enough to get a beer, but uh, you know, yeah, it's okay. Every little bit helps. Yeah. So we did uh, th- these we mentioned last time these supplements will not always follow directly from the previous podcast. Yeah. The last one did yeah. because it followed the 1900 to 1909 section of our 100 Years of Chinese Literature podcast. And we talked about Michael Gibbs Hill's Lean Shu Incorporated. Uh, this one is not a book that follows any particular era, but if you're looking for a so one much. stop shop, an introduction to modern China, this is it. So what are we talking about, Lee? Jonathan Spence. The, the great Jonathan Spence. The Yale historian, Search for Modern China. Search for Modern China. So, a classic. So, so Jonathan Spence is a historian. He wrote most of this at a pizza restaurant outside of Yale. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, he, uh, he he mentions it, and I think his, his acknowledgments. That's so cool. Um, but he, uh, this is, I think if you're looking for one particular book, on modern China, or, or, or go ahead, go ahead, finish your statement. This is it. Now, I was I was about to interrupt you, and I did interrupt you, but now I'm going to finish my thought. Finish interrupting me. Finish <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Lee, for clarifying. The what I was going to say is one book on modern Chinese history, or for you, it's just this is your this is your pick for anything to do with modern China. I'm just going to go big. Wow. Anything on modern China. This is the book. All right, make your case. He covers so he makes an argument that modern China begins in the late Ming, which is huge, which is quite fascinating yes. from from a historical perspective. We can deal with that later, but uh, he goes all the way up. He's actually writing this during the Tiananmen protest in 1989. I think it's this book is published in maybe 1990, 1991. Yes. Mm-hmm. So he has this kind of arc of Chinese history that looks at the revolution of 1911, that looks at the revolution of 1949, and does a great job of incorporating all of this impressive history into this book. Also, Jonathan Spence is the greatest scholar on China that America has produced. You know what I'm about to ask next, right? I think so. But all right, see if you can anticipate what I'm what I'm going to ask or say I, next. I, so, I so our our, our uh, British friends will point out that he was actually born in in the UK. There you go. That's he, what I was um, going to talk about. He got his PhD at Yale. Okay. And he uh, was a historian at Yale after after he he graduated. And so I think and and he's an American he was an American citizen until he died um, or when he died. So I think uh, America can kind of claim him. Okay. Um, and and the, Amer- the American graduate system at there least we can go. claim him. And and the reason I think he is the most impressive figure in American scholarship on China is not only because he is an excellent scholar, mm-hmm. but he's also someone who speaks in such a clear, succinct voice that folks who don't know that much about China can still read his books and go, whoa, yeah, I completely get this. So from the question of who, um, which is a book about a man named who, it's a micro history, uh, the, the, the gate of heavenly, Tien- peace, yeah. of heavenly peace, yeah, which is a history of um, Kang Youwei, uh, Lu Xun, and Dingling, mm-hmm. um, who... That's actually pretty pertinent. That for, is, it came right. If you've for, just listened to the podcast in the 1920s, we yeah, talked about we Dingling. talked about Dingling and Lu Xun. That's it. It's true. Um, and so, uh, I, I, you know, he speaks in this way that is approachable. It's not filled with jargon. 
and it's something that everybody can get. Yeah, everybody who's interested in reading the topic, obviously, that, that sounds fairly obvious, but it is, sure. is worth pointing out. Uh, to, for my money... Don't read it while drinking. <laughs> yeah, or operating heavy machinery. <laughs> um, you could if there's no one else around. Yeah. But... Uh, Oh man, can you imagine reading Jonathan Spence well, audio? Ri- driving edition. a combine. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sure there's somebody doing while that. drinking. While drinking, I mean, if it's a big enough field, why not? Um, Jonathan Spence is a, a heck of a historian. He's one of the very few whose uh, publications are not sort of split, where you have his quote unquote serious academic stuff and his general public stuff, and there the twain shall meet. Right, his. He's able to get get across a, a, an academic point in language that most people can get. Yeah. What I particularly like about this book, and this is my plug for it, is less the history because there are historians I prefer to Jonathan Spence. We really? Will, Who? Oh yeah, we'll talk about those later. Oh man, I can't introduce it now because we we don't have time to t- talk about <laughs> an, an all to competing work. And you haven't read this particular historian, so you're not you're not qualified to have an opinion. Anyway, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the search for modern China, one of the things that, that most impressed me was his usage of literature. Uh, not a lot of historians are able to use literature in a way that isn't just tokenism. Yeah. And I'm just going to lob a poem at you. This poem was written kind of in that period. Isn't can it I, neat? Like I, really to use it in a robust, interesting way. Can I say something? Please. Most historians are are crap. Uh, in terms of using literature, and and and, that's and I think being, most historians that's me, would say most literary. That's me being scholars. me being charitable to historians. Yeah. Um, and and you're right. Most most historians would say literary scholars are are, are very bad at history. Right. I think that's fair. Fair enough. Um, but Jonathan Spence is one of the the scholars who can kind of bridge that. Mm-hmm. And I think the you know I know we're we're recommending Search for Modern China in this particular supplement, but. The uh, the gate of heavenly peace is one of the best pieces in terms of combining scholarship on literature and history that I think I've ever read. Mm. And I have not read that one, mm. so I might have to. Jonathan Spence, this is the particular book we're recommending, but he's also one of those you really can't go wrong with anything he's yeah. ever written. You can literally get pick up a Jonathan Spence book and you'll have a good read on your hands. Yeah, bad Spence. Book. Um, but we we mentioned the search for modern China in particular because. Um, the the series that we're doing is on 20th century Chinese literature. Uh, if you listened to the first, say, decade or two and found yourself going, I'm still not really clear where all this is coming from, right? Sp- this is the book you read. Yep. Uh, you can, in a couple, maybe 100, 200 pages, come abreast with everything that happened before it, mm. from the Ming forward, mm. and be ready to go. Yep. Um, and then he'll take you the rest of the way. So if you're looking for something to kind of read alongside our series, and you will be listening to every episode in the series, of we course, know. faithful listeners, um, this would this would be a good pick. So as we're wrapping things up here, just a reminder: leave us a review wherever you get podcasts, iTunes, Stitcher, wherever Pod you're, Chaser, Pod Chaser, Castbox, whatever. Mm. Look us up on Twitter too. At Twitter, we're Chin Lit Pod, Chinese Literature Podcast, and on Instagram at Chinese Lit Pod. And we are still members of the Patreon family. That's right. We, I think, now have enough patrons to buy beer. That's right. This thank is exciting. This is we'd very like exciting. to thank everybody who yes. has given so far. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, Chinese Literature Podcast through Patreon. Make us rich. I, we're enjoying your beer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right and, now. of course, the website, ChineseLiteraturePodcast.com. Yeah. You can check out all the stuff we've done. So. Give us a shout out so we can uh, keep you informed and keep you in the loop. I'm Lee Moore. I'm Rob Moore. And this is the Chinese Literature Podcast Supplement.